This video covers the average value of a function. Okay, so what is the average value? Basically, if you have a function and say it's a periodic function like this, where it goes down and then up and maybe down and up again, and you want to get an average value, in other words, a value on the y-axis, what is the average value of that function across a particular period? The way we would work this out is we would basically divide the area by whatever length is here between a and b, in other words, b minus a, that length there, the area divided by that length would obviously give you the height where it is roughly on average on the y-axis. So anytime the question it asks you for the average value, watch out for that language, for the average value of a function over a particular interval, then this is how we calculate it. Now this is not in your log tables, so it's something that you have to remember. All we do is we integrate the function between our interval, but we multiply by one over b minus a, which is the same effect as dividing by this length here, okay? So that's the understanding behind it, why we divide the area by this length in order to get the height of it. So that should help you remember exactly what we do here. Whenever we're looking for an average value, those are the key words, average value of a function, integrate it, but multiply by one over b minus a. Okay, let's take a look at an example. So here's our question. Find the average value of the function, f of x equals x squared plus four, and here are our limits, x is between minus two uh, and three. So one over b minus a, and what we're gonna do is integrate from a to b that function with respect to x. All right, so that is what you're going to do for your average value. Off you go, pause the video, see how you get on with this. Okay, so in this case, the b value is the further value. So it's one over three minus, and the a value is the lesser value, so minus two. And we're gonna integrate then from minus two to three, our function x squared plus four dx. So what I get here is one over three minus minus two is five. And when I integrate x squared, I add one on to the power, divide by that new power, and four integrates to four x. And I will put in my limits at minus two to three. So keep that one fifth over here. Uh, keep it out to the side for the moment. And we're just gonna sub in our limits. So three first, so three cubed over three, plus four times three. And then we're gonna subtract, subbing in minus two cubed over three, plus four times minus two. And that's what we're going to evaluate. So keep that one fifth, as I said, right out here at the very edge until I work out all of this in between here first. 3 cubed over 3 plus 4 times 3 I work out first and I get 21 minus and minus 2 cubed over 3 plus 4 times minus 2 works out to be uh, minus 32 over 3 and then all of that is going to get multiplied by 1 fifth. That then all evaluates to 6 and 1 third. Again do check your calculator work because that can be where a few pupils fall down. It can be a little bit intricate and tedious, so just be careful. So six and one third is the average value for that function in that interval. So try this question. We have the velocity v in meters per second of a body t seconds after timing commences is given by v equals three t squared minus four. And the first thing we're gonna do is find the average velocity during the interval t equals one to t equals three. So just look how subtle that is in the questioning there. Find the average velocity. You're always looking out for that word average um, in order to indicate what we do here. Okay, so pause the video and have a go at this one yourself. So velocity is given by 3t squared minus 4, and we want to go from t equals 1 to t equals 3. So it's going to be 1 over 3 minus 1, and we're going to integrate between 1 and 3, our function 3t squared minus 4, and in this case, it's with respect to t. So let's work this out. Uh, this is 1 half, 
and then 3t squared, we add 1 amp to the power, divide by that new power, and 4 integrates to 4t, and we are subbing in our values 1 and 3. So as I said, keep this half out here, and we will sub in our limits then. So it's going to be 3 times 3 cubed over 3 minus 4 times 3. That's the first one. And then 3 times 1 cubed over 3 minus 4 times 1 and then all of that will be multiplied by a half then. Okay, so evaluating that a little bit further, keep the half, as I said, out here until the very end. And this bracket here all evaluates to 15. And again, double check you're able to do that calculator work. It can be tricky um, and tedious. And this here all evaluates to uh, minus 3. So half of all of that then works out to be 9 meters per second in this case is the units and that is its average velocity okay so that was part i now part ii if you remember asked me so so we have here uh what our velocity is given by okay and we are told between t equals one to t equals three and part two asked us to find the average acceleration now, if you remember from your calculus, velocity or speed, when differentiated, gives you acceleration. So the first thing I need, if I want the average acceleration, is to find the function for acceleration. So what I'm going to have to do with velocity is, if I differentiate it, once you differentiate speed, you always get acceleration. So differentiating the velocity will give me the acceleration. That will give me then the function that I'm going to work with. So differentiating 3t squared gives me 6t, and differentiating minus 4 is 0. So now that is your expression, or should I say your function for acceleration. So now if I want to find the average acceleration, so the key word there, average acceleration, I'm going to do 1 over 3 minus 1, my limits, and integrate between 1 and 3, but my function this time is the acceleration function with respect to t. So that becomes a half, and 6t integrated, uh, add 1 onto the power, divide by that new power, and then we're going to sub in our limits 1 and 3. So evaluating that a little bit further, Keep the half out here. Uh, 6 t squared divided by 2. 6 divided by 2 evaluates, of course, 3 t squared. And I'm going to sub in the 3 for the t. So 3 times 3 squared. I'm getting, when I sub in the 3, minus, and then I'm getting um, 3 times 1 squared when I sub in the 1. And then I will evaluate that and multiply at the end by a half. So evaluating this further. I get 27 minus 3, and a half of this works out to be 12. And it's meters per second squared are your units for acceleration. So 12 meters per second squared is the average acceleration. Okay, last example. In this question, it says the average value of the function f of x equals x plus 1 for the x values between 2 and k, the average value works out to be 8. And what they're asking me here is to find the value of k. So remember what we have here? This, of course, you need to know. Pause the video here and see how you get on with this question. Okay, so we're told that the average value of this works out to be 8. So let's sub in what we have. We don't obviously have this limit here, but we'll sub it in obviously as it is k. It would be k uh, minus this limit 2, and we would go then from 2 to k, and we would integrate the x plus 1 with respect to x. Okay, so let's try and evaluate this as best we can. So obviously there's nothing more I can do with that. I get k minus 2. Um, but integrating x plus 1, x integrates to, add 1 onto the power, divide by the new power, and 1 integrates to x. And what I would do with that then is I would sub in the 2 
and the K. All right, so let's keep going as far as we can now with this, even though we are dealing with the unknown here. So eight is equal to, again, can't do anything more here, but what I would do at this point is sub in this value for K, and then subtract this here. And again, let's evaluate this now as far as I can go. That's going to be k squared over 2 plus k. And this will work out to be 4. All right, now this looks quite complicated here but let's just again take it bit by bit and uh, what I'm going to do next because I can't really evaluate that uh, much more in the brackets I'm going to multiply each of these by the 1 over k minus 2 and then because I have an equation I'm going to try and get rid of that denominator then so at least I'm dealing with something that is not in fraction form. Okay, so what we're going to do next is multiply um, both of these terms because there's nothing really more I can do with this inside these brackets. So I'm going to multiply each of these terms by 1 over k minus 2. So this will still remain 8 and I will get 1 over k minus 2 times k squared over 2 plus k and then minus 1 over k minus 2 times 4. OK, now what I have now is this nasty divide by K minus two. But because it's an equation, what I can do now is multiply the whole line or each term in the equation by K minus two. So multiply that by K minus two, that by K minus two, and that by K minus two. And then that will cancel with that, that with that, and that will leave me with 8k minus 16 equals k squared over 2 plus k, because 1 times all of that is that, and then 1 times 4, so just minus 4. So that looks a lot nicer. And again, we can now get rid of this divide by 2 by multiplying across by 2. So I'm going to multiply that by 2, that by 2, that by 2, that by 2, and that by 2. And then that will get rid of that. So I'm left with 16k minus 32 equals k squared plus 2k minus 8. Okay, so this is tidying up quite nicely now. Um, tidying up a bit further, you should have spotted by now, of course, we're going to be left with some sort of quadratic. So I'm going to bring the terms over and I will get k squared 2k minus 16k is minus 14k and minus 8 plus 32 is going to give me plus 24. So there we go. That's the quadratic we are left with. And then let's factorise to solve this. And we'd end up with factors of 24. That's going to make a minus 14 would be 12 times 2, where it would be minus 12 minus 2. Um, so k minus 2 equals 0, or k minus 12 equals 0, which implies at 2 to both sides, k is 2. At 12 to both sides, k is 12. So since it said, if we go back to our question, uh, find the average value um, of the k between 2 and k, obviously that doesn't make sense then that it would be between 2 and 2. So the final answer is... 12.